we're losing our traditions. <laughs> fangirl, fangirl all over the place. Let me eat my sushi and complain. You guys know I don't know how to cook, right? Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang. So today guys, you're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. And mukbang is an eating show. So we're gonna eat together and we're gonna chat. So if that's your thing, then don't forget to subscribe and of course thumbs up this video. And um, today guys, as you can see here, we are doing vegan sushi. I'm so excited. We're doing another episode of my support local series, which is basically where I just support local establishments here in my city, which is Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And and I've just been eating around the city, eating all the vegan food I can find. So this time I got the food from a place called Whole Life Go. So this is a completely vegan sushi establishment and they opened pretty recently and look at this beauty right here. Oh my God, guys, like seriously. So excited to eat sushi. You guys know I love sushi. This roll right here, this is their new kimchi roll, you guys. And this roll is extra special because it actually uses kimchi from my cafe. So I have a cafe called Savage Cafe here in my city. And uh, this roll actually uses the kimchi from my cafe that my mom makes and they turned it into a roll. So we kind of have a little collaboration situation going on here. And they also gifted me, very kind of them, a few pieces of their new uh, roll. This is the natto roll. Anyway, excited to try that. Yeah, oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, let's, let's dig in. First I need, of course, soy sauce. I'm just gonna use one of the lids here. I'm so excited to eat. I'm so excited to eat. And of course you guys, to drink, I have bubbly, but we'll get to that later because I'm hungry. Oh, I also have some miso soup. Mmm, so excited. So this one is the kimchi roll, like I mentioned. This one is the red roll. And this one is the spicy mango. And then this one is the a few pieces of the natto. So I'm gonna try the kimchi one first because it uses my mama's kimchi. So let's just show you guys what this is all about. I think there's like tofu in here and some of Savage Cafe kimchi, which we sell as well in our cafe. I forgot wasabi. Mm. Are you a wasabi person? Guys, let me know. Do you like wasabi with your sushi or do you hate it? <laughs> I used to not like wasabi um, when I was younger and I still don't necessarily like it. I only like it when it's like really diluted into the soy sauce, um, but some people like love it. They can like eat like big bites of wasabi. <laughs> and I've seen some people eat sushi with just wasabi and no soy sauce and I'm like, how do you do that? I think I didn't like wasabi for a long time because I used to work at a sushi restaurant when I was like really young, when I was like 14. I worked there for like four years and um, I remember I had to make wasabi. It was not, it was not fun. But yeah, okay, so let me try this special kimchi roll which uses Savage Cafe kimchi which we sell in our cafe. Cheers, bon appetit. Mmm, mm-hmm. Mmm, I can taste the kimchi. Tons of flavor. There's tofu in there. Mmm. I'm gonna have to do another one of these. Hold on. Let's try another one. Mmm. Mmm. The tofu is like nice and almost crispy on the outside, I feel. I can taste my mama's kimchi, it's very special. Next, I have the miso soup. I'm just gonna have a little, there's like mushrooms in here, ooh. Mm. Ooh, look at this mushroom. So good. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, so, I used to work at a sushi restaurant when I was younger and and I remember having to make wasabi and it comes in like a powder. I don't know if this is how they make wasabi like across the board, but this is what they did at the sushi restaurant that I worked at. It comes in like a powder and then you have to like mix it with water. When you're mixing it, like it's like so spicy on your face. It's like not a fun experience. Anyways, oh, this one is the um, red roll. So I believe on top we've got a tomato tuna. Tomato is like the best way to make like vegan tuna by the way. Well, like raw vegan tuna, like tuna for sushi. Mm. Mm. 
Mm -mm. Very fresh, almost melts in your mouth. Very delicious. All right, next we're doing the spicy mango. Very excited for this one as well. Ooh, spicy mango. Mm. Mm. I love sushi. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to try this natto. So if you guys remember, <laughs> there's a couple of videos that I did where I was like, look at me eating natto. Natto, if you guys don't know, is like this Japanese fermented soybean thing and it's like very fermented. I always say it's like an acquired taste and I'm not even sure if I've acquired this taste yet. I'm not completely opposed to it, but I'm also not at the point where I'm like enjoying natto yet. But let's try this one. Ooh. So this is the natto. I'm excited. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. Again, it, this is like a major acquired taste. I feel like I need to eat it at least 20 times before I'm like fully on board, you know? But Japanese people, they like eat it for breakfast with like rice and it's like a whole thing. But anyway, um, you guys, how are we doing? I'm having a day, guys. I'm having a day. Um, I was feeling quite, not even emotional, just like feeling blah. You know what I mean? Just blah. I'm doing another kimchi roll. Deliciousness. Mm. I'm sorry, but my mama's kimchi is out of this world. So good. So much flavor. Oh, anyway, continuing on. Yeah, today I've just been feeling a bit blah. I think it's the weather plus what Daniel called quarantine fatigue. So yeah, I'm experiencing a little bit of that now. The weather's gotten a bit colder now, which I mean is expected because it's end of January. Usually by beginning of January, it's already like really cold, but um, it's gotten a bit colder now. It's like really gloomy the last few days. <sighs> so yeah, it's not, it's not fun. Mm. The thing is I'm busy. It's not like I'm like bored. I'm not bored because I'm always busy, but it's like every day is the same. Again, Daniel was like, yeah, it's like Groundhog Day. Have you guys seen that movie, Groundhog Day? I actually watched it pretty recently, Groundhog Day. It was pretty funny. I'm so happy my city now has a vegan sushi place because when I first gave up most animal products, I talk about this all the time, but the last thing I gave up was fish. That was the last thing. I held on to fish for a very long time because, especially because I didn't want to give up sushi. Yeah. Another kimchi roll. Mm. Mm. I didn't want to give up sushi and at that time I was like, oh my god, do I have to resort to avocado rolls and cucumber rolls? When I worked at the sushi restaurant, I would always like judge people that would get the avocado rolls and the sushi rolls. I'm like, there's so much sushi out there. Why are you getting the avocado roll? I probably didn't even realize that, you know, 
people were vegetarian, they don't eat, you know, fish at that time. Yeah, safe to say now, I realize that you just have to be a little bit creative and you can eat vegan sushi. That's not just avocado and cucumber. Okay, let's do the second natto. Ooh, I kind of want to show you guys, but like, can you see? There's like green onion on top, so I don't want to drop it all. But it's like stringy. So when you take it out of the packaging, it's like stringy. And it's like very, very like fermented. <laughs> It's like cream cheese like <laughs> in like a really weird way. I'm down for it. Time to have some bubbly. Of course, I've got my grapefruit. Mm. Do I look pale in this lighting or what, guys? <sighs> Cheers. Anyways, what was last thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, so I used to think if I were to go vegan, I can only eat like cucumber roll and like avocado roll. And even to this day, I like almost never get, okay, I like almost never get cucumber roll cause I'm like, what the hell? It's just cucumbers and rice. I can eat that at home. But yeah, avocado roll, I'm still down for, you know what I mean? Avocado roll's still good. Mm. Mm -mm. I remember I go to New York, San Francisco, and LA, and all those places. I visited like a vegan sushi place there. New York would be Beyond Sushi, I think. And San Francisco, I think it was called Shizen, or was that LA? Anyway, point of the story is I love sushi, and I'm glad I can get <laughs> vegan sushi now in my city, and I don't have to make it all the time, and it's not just avocado rolls and cucumber rolls. Mmm. Mmm, this one has something creamy inside. Yum. All right, let's do another one of this kimchi roll. Delicious. Let's do a little bit of the sauce that's left over here. Yum. Mm, mm. 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 Kimchi, honestly, it's the greatest thing. Who invented kimchi? <laughs> Seriously. Kimchi is like a very traditional Korean dish and people have been eating it for like probably thousands of years. Now I'm curious, when did people start eating kimchi? Let's see, around 4,000 years ago, my friends. Kimchi is Korea's unique ethnic food and historical records show that kimchi was invented around 4,000 years ago. <gasps> you guys, that's insane. 4,000 years, guys, 4,000 years, people have been eating kimchi. <gasps> Isn't that amazing? Now I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm very much amazed. Just like, people are so smart, especially during that time. It's like, they don't have technology. They don't have Google. They don't have YouTube. They have nothing. They're just like making kimchi, you know? How do they know how to ferment things? Mm. Mm. Anyway, I'm very much amazed. That's pretty incredible. That is pretty incredible. And it's been passed down, guys, from generation to generation for 4,000 years. We're still eating it today. Now it's more internationally recognized. When I was young, it wasn't as like globally recognized, just like a lot of, you know, other things. <laughs> I feel like we've become a lot more like globally intertwined. So people are exploring more with other cuisines. Korean food has become a lot more popular, I think. Even sushi, like, I feel like it became more po more and more popular as I got older. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so so delicious. I'm afraid now that like in our generation, like my age people, 
and people younger than me, are we really gonna keep making the kimchi? Because I feel like, at least up until like my, my parents' generation, everyone in my parents' generation probably knows how to make kimchi. I mean, not everybody, a lot of people. A lot of people my mom's age, like everyone makes their own kimchi in the house. But now, there's so many companies that make kimchi and they sell it in like, you know, jars and stuff. And um, I mean, it's not as good. In my opinion, it's not as good as homemade kimchi. Obviously, it depends on who makes it. My mom's always made very good kimchi. But people are now selling it. The companies are making it. They're producing like tons and tons of kimchi. And now I'm like, okay, do people in my generation know how to make kimchi? And is this going to be passed down to the next generation? <sighs> What's that to think about? Or is this gonna become like, I don't know, just something that a few people know how to make and then everyone else just buys it. I mean, even me, I've probably made kimchi like three times, maybe once properly. <laughs> That's when I was living in London and I didn't have my mom's kimchi. And now that I live back here, my mom makes kimchi. So I just eat her kimchi, but I do have her recipe so I can still make her kimchi, but it's just not the same. Like she knows how to do it. Okay. For those of you, anyone that's ever tried making kimchi, it's like not easy to like get it right. Okay. Half the time it's your intuition. And if you don't make kimchi all the time, you don't have much intuition. <laughs> You're just like, eh. like for example, my mom, when she makes that, she like never measures. And I made her measure one time because I was like, okay, I need to get the recipe for my YouTube channel. And that's probably the only time she's ever measured <laughs> because otherwise she just has, you know, it depends on so many things, right? It depends on the size of the cabbage, how much the cabbage weighs, like all these things. It's one of those things. You have to have that intuition. I'm afraid that the next generation, like we're already screwed up this generation. <laughs> I feel like probably the majority of this generation doesn't know how to make kimchi. And then the next generation is going to be even worse. <gasps> we're losing our traditions. <laughs> so sad. Everything's just become a product. I remember the first time I tried making kimchi. I was in London, so I was desperate, okay? Didn't know how to make kimchi. Never made it before, because again, my mom used to make it, and I was always there. Cause she makes it in like big batches, so it's always there, right? So when I was living in London, I was like, oh my God, I need to make some kimchi. And Lord knows you're not gonna find delicious vegan kimchi in London, sorry. I'm not a snob about too many things, but when it comes to kimchi, I'm a snob, okay? Like when I walk into a health food store and see a jar of sauerkraut looking thing and it says kimchi on it, it does not make me happy, my friends. It does not make me happy. So I tried making it and it turns out I am an idiot and I bought the wrong cabbage. I literally just bought just normal cabbage, okay? You're supposed to buy the Chinese cabbage, which is like long and whatever. That's what you're supposed to buy. That's what you're supposed to use. And I just bought like regular cabbage and I tried and like it didn't, it didn't ferment properly and it was just weird, okay? <laughs> it was just like cabbage with like hot pepper paste. <laughs> it was not good. And I like told my mom, I was like, oh, I don't know what I did wrong. And she's like, did you buy the right cabbage? I was like, I guess I did not. Um, I told my mom, I was like, mom, people want your cucumber kimchi recipe now. So I'm gonna have to go over to my parents' house whenever I can and get you guys the cucumber kimchi recipe. Along with, you guys wanted also the her cashew cheese recipe, which mm -hmm, is delicious. Okay. I don't have a napkin. <sighs> I'm coming to an end and I'm sad. <laughs> oh, you guys. You know what? This whole thing has just made me feel a lot better. Eating, talking to you guys about kimchi, finding out it's a 4,000 year tradition. It made me feel a lot better, guys. Thank you. I really shouldn't be complaining. I mean, in the beginning of this whole situation, the COVID, I think it was like okay for me because I was in a really 
lucky position to be working for myself already. And even though our cafe had to close for like three months in that initial period, um, it was okay for me. Like, I think it was kind of nice almost to kind of have that extra time away from the cafe because I was working way too much. So I guess I got the break that I was like wanting, but like not in that way that I wanted, but still. And then, yeah, for the first like few months, it was okay. And then it was summer. And then summer, it got a lot better. And then of course, as fall hit and the winter hit, it started to get, you know, worse and worse again. But yeah, I think initially like it was okay for me because again, I had a job still and I still have a job and I really should not be complaining. Um, I think I'm just feeling a little bit just bored and just a bit, not even bored. What's the word? Just like everything is the same. Every day is the same. It's becoming repetitive and I'm working probably too much and it's, yeah. Anyways, I don't want to say I shouldn't be complaining either because I do feel like, you know, everyone should have, everyone can have their days where they're feeling kind of bad, even if they have the best life ever, you know? We all have our days, right? This is my day. Let me have my day. Let me eat my sushi and complain. Oh, no, these mushrooms are so good. What are these mushrooms? Mm. And I also remember when I was in Sao Paulo, Brazil, I went to some like all you can eat vegan sushi place. That was also amazing. Ugh. We just need more vegan sushi places all over the world. <laughs> That's what I want. More vegan sushi places, more vegan Korean restaurants as well. I say this all the time, but it's it's a shame that there aren't more vegan Korean restaurants because vegan Korean food is so good and Korean food is very easy to veganize. As long as you like want to do it, you can veganize almost anything that's Korean and Korean cuisine is just very like versatile and there's a lot going on. You could do so much. So yeah, that's what we try to do at my cafe. And I'm glad to have a cafe where I can at least share some parts of Korean food. Um, but the unfortunate thing about my cafe is that our like kitchen space is like barely a kitchen space. Like I don't even know how we make it work, okay? But we make it work somehow. But yeah, our kitchen space is like very, very small and it's like not really even meant to be like a restaurant sort of thing. So we don't have a full kitchen, but somehow we're able to make it work, which is good. Yeah, the funny thing is guys, little story. We were actually thinking about moving to, you know, a bigger location with like a full kitchen and like more dining space. And I wanted to do kind of like, like dinner service and you know, have booze, of course. You guys know I love booze. <gasps> I realized I had sake. I should have, that would have been so good. I should have drank some sake. But now we're ending this and also I probably shouldn't be drinking. Okay, never mind. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, we were actually thinking about moving the cafe to potentially a bigger location that we could have. Cause right now we're, our cafe is actually inside a fitness center. Because it's in the fitness center, uh, we don't have our own entrance, okay? So you have to go into the fitness center to get to our cafe, which is like fine, but also like we're kind of hidden. Like a lot of people like don't even know that we exist. But, and you know what? Like despite the fact that people can't see our cafe from outside really, and it's like hard to tell what we are, and a lot of people like don't even know we exist. Despite that, we're still doing pretty good. So that's good. <laughs> we're still surviving. But yeah, pre-pandemic, we were like thinking about maybe moving to a location where we can have our own, you know, storefront and serve booze and be like a full service restaurant. But then, <laughs> am I ever glad that we did not do that because then the pandemic hit and then everyone had to close down and then our rent would have like been so much higher than what it is now. And I don't even know if we would have survived because, you know, that would have been really difficult. So yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we did not do that. I remember looking at a few different places, looking at some options, and I thought it was like too expensive at the time and nothing was like really great in terms of location. So we didn't uh, move at that time and then the pandemic hit. So we were like, oh my God, thank God we didn't actually move because we would pay like so much more in rent and we would have had like nobody. <laughs> But yeah, running a restaurant, guys, or a cafe, is not easy. <laughs> I think a lot of people dream of having their own cafe or something, but it's so much work. It's not easy, guys. It is not easy, okay? First of all, it's a lot of money and a lot of risk. 
and then also you have to go in and do a lot of work yourself and then there's also of course hiring people managing people inventory i mean it's just like yeah so a part of me likes doing what we're doing and having a small establishment a big part of me doesn't necessarily want to become like a bigger establishment because it's just gonna be more risk more work and yeah i got this to worry about i got this channel to worry about as well you know what i'm saying Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, the last one of the kimchi roll. I'm sad. It's funny, like the things that you think about doing with your life versus the actual reality of it. I think it's people like to dream about becoming, you know, an actor or like a famous DJ or like a YouTuber or a cafe owner or a restaurant owner. And then if you actually become one of those things, you realize like the reality of it. I wonder how many of those people that had these big dreams, how many people get like disappointed by the reality of things. Hmm, interesting. By the way, I'm not saying that I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm definitely not saying that I'm disappointed. I am very happy with my career situation and my job situation. The cafe just kind of happened. If you guys want to know the story of like how I got started with the cafe, um, I'll have a video here or here. You can watch that. I think I filmed it in the beginning of, actually maybe a year after we opened, but it just kind of happened. It wasn't something I was planning. It's definitely not something I had in my mind because I was already doing YouTube, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but I think my point of that whole statement is like we all have like an idea of what it would be like to be like a cafe owner or a youtuber or an actor or a painter full-time or a photographer or all of these things we like envision something in our minds and it's pretty much never the way that you envisioned it probably no matter what your dream may be no matter what you want to become whenever you get there the reality is like never going to be the same that you've thought in your head, right? Because you've just imagined a life. You imagined how things might be. And then when you actually get there, you're like, oh, so this is how it is. It's not always a bad thing, but it's just different from your imagination. That's why they call it a dream, okay? It's a dream and not reality. You're dreaming. So yeah, that's what's interesting. That's what's interesting. So I think when you're young, you like dream and think about, oh, like when I get this job, I'll do this. And when I get married, if I fall in love, I'm gonna feel so like this and it's gonna be amazing, blah, 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 blah. And then you actually experience all of those things and then you learn that, okay, like it's not exactly how I thought it was going to be like. It's a bit different interesting like being a youtuber for example when i first found out that people could become a youtuber and like do this full time i was like oh my god i want that for myself i was like i want to become a youtuber yeah i wanted to become a youtuber i think when i was like 20 19 18 maybe that age is when i like really was into youtube actually i was into youtube from like the very beginning okay like you know what's really cool i'm just gonna like Put it out there because I think it's so cool. Okay, somebody commented, I think it was in my last mukbang, and they said, this table gives them anxiety. And let me tell you, it gives me anxiety every time. <laughs> every time I eat, I'm like, oh, it's wobbly. I can't help it. I don't know why, okay? Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the cool thing, just on a side note, is so when I first started watching YouTube, I basically started watching YouTube when it came out, when it was like first a thing. And I think that was in like 2006, I wanna say. I think I was in high school, yeah. 
and I was really into singing. I still love singing, but I was like, really into singing at that time. So I was watching so many like singing videos, like cover videos. I loved watching those. And I loved Esme Denters. Okay, Esme. You guys remember Esme? She is like the OG of like YouTube singers, okay? She ended up like touring with Justin Timberlake. I mean, very cool stuff. Anyways, she's still on YouTube, by the way. She actually became vegan, I think in the last, I don't know, I don't know when she became vegan. Maybe it was a few years ago. And it turns out she watches my channel. What? Insane, because I remember like watching her and like just thinking she was so cool when I was, I think she's my age actually. Esme, if you're watching, hi. Yeah, she's my age, I think. Either my age or maybe a year older. I think she's my age. And I remember like she was huge on YouTube. I think she was like the number one like singer on YouTube. And I just remember watching all her like singing videos and being like, oh my gosh, she's so good. Oh my gosh, she's like famous, like blah, blah, blah. It turns out she watches my channel. Like, isn't that so cool? See, that's cool. That kind of stuff is cool, you know? Mm. So yeah, I don't know how I found out that she watches my channel. I think maybe I commented on one of her videos. Actually, I don't know. Did she comment on mine? It was like a few years ago. I may have commented on one of her videos because she said she was like eating vegan or something. I think. And then she responded being like, oh, I follow your channel. And I was like, oh my God, what? Fangirl, fangirl all over the place. That's pretty cool, hey? <laughs> well, there you go. I finished it all, of course. Mm. But yeah, when I was younger, I was always thinking about, oh my God. What would it be like to be a YouTuber? Just wake up in the morning, grab a camera, just talk to a camera. <laughs> of course, I had to choose becoming a food YouTuber, which makes it a little bit more challenging. <laughs> There's a little bit more prep involved, you know? It's funny because when I first started my channel, I was not intending on becoming a food channel. Guys, did you know this? I started my channel when I was living in London and I lived in this house in Leighton which is in East London and it was like a house share and I had the tiniest bedroom. I remember my bedroom was so small. I could barely fit a bed in the room and I just had the bed basically. There's no room for a closet. I think I had like a little tiny little like shelf thing in my room. It was just so tiny and I started my channel there. I filmed my first video in that tiny little bedroom. Oh my God. But yeah, the whole point of my channel was not Actually, I didn't know what I exactly wanted to do with my channel when I first started. I just wanted to like, I don't know, be part of that vegan community that I was like following a lot. And then it just kind of like became a food channel just by accident. Uh, well, obviously not by accident, but that's because people wanted the food stuff. I was like, you guys know I don't know how to cook, right? <laughs> I'm like, do you guys think I'm like, do you think I know what I'm doing or something? Because <laughs> I think initially what I wanted to do was I think I wanted like a kind of, you know, all around vegan channel, right? I wanted to do some like, you know, what I ate in a day videos, which I think was one of my first videos that I did. It may have been my first video was what I ate in a day. I don't know. Oh gosh, please don't go searching for my first video. Oh, you guys are going to do it now. Oh no, it's going to be so cringy. No. The first or second video I did was like a what I ate in a day. And at that time, this was like 2015, it wasn't as big. Like what I ate in a day is weren't as big at the time. So it got a lot of traction. And then I think what really kicked off my channel, I think was doing meal prep videos. And also I did this challenge where it was like how to live on one pound a day. So I did like a vegan challenge to like eat, like live on one pound a day, essentially. So that I remember kind of took off. And then it just kind of became this like recipe channel. And I was like, well, I guess I kind of need to learn how to cook then. Still don't really know what I'm doing, let's be honest. <laughs> the other day I had to ask Daniel what sauteing is. What the hell? Like I had to be like, let me saute some garlic. Is this sauteing? Is that the right word? <laughs> like what? What is wrong with me? <laughs> so that's how my channel became a, a cooking channel, which it was not really intended to be. I wanted to be like maybe a commentary channel. Like I wanted to, you know, show some of what I eat, but also do a lot of commentary on, you know, vegan community and veganism and do videos talking about veganism, which I still do now. I, um, that's why I still like to incorporate those things because that is something that I am really genuinely passionate about. And I do think that is something that I'm kind of good at. All right, guys, so uh, I want dessert. I want dessert, but I don't have dessert. 
Do I have chocolate? Mm, I might have chocolate. Ooh, I have chocolate. Ooh, guys, I found chocolate. This was actually given to me for Christmas. It was one of the little things in my Christmas gift bag. So I'll try this. This is Nicaragua dark chocolate, 70%. Ooh, certified vegan. It's made here, it's local. That's exciting. Ooh, cute, cute. I'm very excited. I'm so happy I have chocolate. Yum. Chocolate time. Mmm. I love dark chocolate. Mmm. Yummy. Mmm. Oh my god, so good. I almost feel like... I think I like dark chocolate more than like a milky chocolate because dark chocolate is just like it tastes more like chocolate you know it has that real chocolatiness mmm so good let me just finish this last piece of chocolate mmm so good All right, you guys, so that is it for my mukbang. That was very chill. I very much enjoyed myself, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed eating with me. All the food was very delicious. I mean, as you can tell here, there's literally nothing left. I've finished it all. <laughs> but what else is new? Okay, anyways, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, guys, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!